Good morning, everybody. It's been a couple of months since my last video because uh, the semester started and I've been focusing on school. I haven't really had anything to update y'all on because I haven't uh, com completed many classes yet. I have completed one. Uh, it's easy. It's only worth one credit. I think it should be worth at least two credits, but that's... I'm not in charge of that, so whatever. I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance. Uh, the guys are out mowing the yard this morning, so uh, you might hear them or my two dogs that are in the bedroom still uh, that can hear the lawnmower going by the window and they're going bananas. Um, so this video is about, let me just make sure that I get everything correct here. It's version control. Uh, D is in Delta 197. Um, that is teaching you how to use Git. If you don't know what Git is, Git, G-I-T, is basically a program that we are all going to be using um, to collaborate with other software engineers when we get into the field. Uh, it's free. It's something that you can do now. Um, the command window, which you guys may have seen either messing around with it on your computer before or, you know, in movies when guys are hacking and they're in that little black window with just the green text going across the screen. That's the command window. Essentially, uh, Git is, this was actually, this helped me out a lot. I came across somebody who described it as a, um, uh, a memory card. You remember back in the day when you had to pop the little memory cards into your PlayStation or whatever if you wanted to save your progress? That's basically what Git is. Um, so let's say you're in a file, right, and you're writing some HTML or some CSS or right now I'm in I'm doing Python, right? So uh, you essentially you use Git, a G-I-T, to create a repository which is essentially just a little library where you're going to send your files that of code that you're writing, right? And everything will get saved into that repository. Well, with Git, what you can do is you can link your repository to your Git window, okay? And you open up Git, you have your little window, you tell Git where you want to go. So let's say I want to go to my documents folder on my computer, and then inside my documents folder, I want to go to this other folder. And then inside that other folder, I want to go to the file that I'm working on, right? Once Git is connected to the file that you're working on, then you can, every once in a while, um, like we used to have to do back in the day, if the game didn't save on its own, you would pause, you'd save your progress so that if you died, you wouldn't have to go all the way back to the beginning. It's essentially the same concept, right? So you would use that to just save whatever new code you put in. Once you save the code, you have to, well, let me back up. In order to save the code, there are a couple of steps that you have to go through. So let's say I'm working, I'm working, I'm writing code, I'm writing code. Okay, I wanna save where I'm at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put in a couple of commands in Git. Uh, the first one is Git, G-I-T, space, add, A-D-D, space, and then a period. A period selects all of the changes that you've made so far. So you're gonna add that. I'm gonna add this to, to, to save, okay? <clears throat> Next thing you have to do is you have to commit it to memory. So you would do a git command git commit dash m and then you would write a little message in quotation marks that explains the changes you just made inside your code. Okay, once you've added the changes, committed the changes, then what you're going to do is you're going to push. You're going to push those changes to your GitHub or GitLab profile, which is essentially just an online memory bank that you can use to collaborate with other software engineers. They can go to your GitHub and see the files you've been working on. They can download those files. They can make changes themselves. They can send them back to you to see if it's something that you like. And none of that affects what you have saved over here. <clears throat> it's uh, fairly easy to understand once you 
understand what you're what you're doing, okay, um, or the of how it how it acts, okay. So, in D one ninety seven, um, don't take too much time on this. In, in actual, once I figured this out, really all of this could be done in a couple of hours, and boom, your first class is done. You got an extra credit. So don't focus on it too much. My advice would be to sit down for three or four hours one day and just go through the course material. You're going to open up the course material. It's going to have a page, you know, with some explanations on it, but there are going to be links up at the top. I think it's labeled, let's see here, how did they label it? Um, bu -bu 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 yeah, unit 1.2.1, unit 1.2.2, unit 1.2.3, and so on and so forth. And it goes up to yeah, unit 1.3.3. So you've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven different areas that you're gonna go into. And when you first start, or is it eleven? Wait a second. No, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So nineteen. So when you go, when you click into, uh, for the example, the first one, unit one point one point one, is titled "What is Git," and they are explaining to you what Git is, essentially how I just explained it to you. And I think the way that I just explained it was easier. So you might want to um, just keep that in mind as you're going through this. So for example, 1.1.1 has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different little pieces inside of it. And they each have a couple of videos. It says, what is Git? They give you a quick background. Then it says, watch here. And you have three little videos. One's three minutes long, one's nine minutes long, one's five minutes long. That, once you click on one of those videos, it's just gonna take you over to LinkedIn Learning. It's somebody explaining how to use Git, and um, that's pretty much it. You just watch it, and uh, it'll explain enough to you that you will understand how to use the basics of Git. Now, where I messed up is I followed along with the videos, made my own GitHub profile, and then started just typing up some random basic CSS and HTML so I could practice adding, committing, and pushing my changes to my new GitHub profile. That worked out really well, actually. It helped a lot. Where I had a problem was when I got to the assessment for the course. The assessment for the course is they'll, they'll give you a packet of information. Uh, I think it's called the WGU Hub. It's a zipped folder, and there are some HTML files in there, some CSS files in there, and, and things of that nature. And really, all you have to do is make some basic changes to each of those files, and then through Git, you save those changes and you push them to your, to your repository on the internet. Um, they show you how to use Git but they don't show you how to use GitLab. So the first problem I ran into is when I started the assessment, it was in GitLab, not GitHub, where I had been practicing. So you might want to familiarize yourself with GitLab first. Once you're familiarized with GitLab, and that was the other thing, what messed me up is I had created my own repository so I could follow along with the course material. Once I got into the assessment and started doing uh, the work that they wanted me to do, I got tangled up between my repository that I had been practicing on and the new repository that they force you to make for your project. That required a lot of extra time for me to backtrack and you know reconnect it to this new GitLab and it was just a big mess. So. I would recommend don't follow along with the course material and start fresh on your assessment because if you start fresh on your assessment, you can basically Google everything it tells you that you want to do and you can even copy and paste the commands in there if you really have to. Um, I think if you can go through and just watch all the videos at least up until 
<coughs> what was it? Um, let's see here. What is Git? How to install Git? Uh, getting started, concepts and architecture, make changes to files, use Git with a real project, undo changes, ignore files. Um, I think I got up to about unit 1.2.3, so it was about halfway through, and once I reached that point, I pretty much knew how to, I pretty much knew everything that I needed to know how to complete the assessment. Um, so my advice would be A, learn how to use GitLab. Look at some tutorials or GitLab actually does a really good job when you create your own Git repository um, on explaining what to do. Now don't go off and just start a GitLab right away because there's particulars that you're going to need to put in there when uh, you start your assessment and so just YouTube a couple of things and just get familiar with it so you know where things are located. That was pretty much my biggest issue was not was the navigation of the platform. Okay, So if you can watch through half of the course maybe a couple hours worth of videos and uh, I took some notes actually if I can add the file here I have a git step-by-step -step, uh, note list that has some commands and you know step one navigate to the directory that houses the file that you want to work on step two view the directory contents you know stuff like that just to help you get started if I can I'm not a big youtuber but if I can I'll I'll add that down in the comments for you as a download um, but yeah so watch at least half the course videos learn a little bit about GitLab and then when you start your start your assessment um, if you get stuck it's easily Googleable. Uh, you can copy and paste put it into Google there's some good stuff that pops up it'll tell you exactly how you're supposed to do it and um, if you have any questions like always go ahead and leave them down in the comments I'm sorry I'm not on here as often as I would like to be uh, but I will get to them as soon as possible. Uh, there's also really good help in the course chatter section of the uh, of the course if you get stuck. But go ahead and check the comments just in case I can add that in there. Uh, I'll try my best. But let me know if you have any questions. Don't think about this too hard. Just avoid practicing before because you'll get stuck in your own repository and you won't know enough to get out of it and it'll require extra time. Git is not something that we have to use right away. It's something that you can easily figure out on your own. I don't know why this is even a course, to be honest with you. Um, but it's, this isn't, don't waste too much of your time on this. Just get through the basics of how it operates get familiar with GitLab and then if you need to you can Google how to do certain things um, just make sure that you are paying attention to exactly what they want you to do and exactly how they want you to turn in your project um, because I think at the very top one of the first things that they say is to make sure you send your URL for your GitLab repository in with your project which I forgot to do because they didn't repeat themselves. So just things like that. Just pay attention. If you have four or five hours one afternoon, you could sit down and knock this class out in a day or less. But uh, check the comments again and uh, go ahead and follow and subscribe so that you see when I post a new video because in the next couple of months, I'm going to be doing uh, the Python course. I'm going to be doing the... Uh, IT project management course, you know, I'll be doing videos about all of that stuff. Um, so let me know what you think or if you have any questions, but good luck and you guys got this. It's, it's really not a big deal. They make it more confusing than it needs to be. I bet you if you just follow with follow along with what I said before, I bet you won't have as many issues as I did. All right, guys, have a good day. Bye-bye.